Well, here we go. Thursday morning again. Tis Thursday, and yeah, I get lost with the days. I expect a lot of people doing this weather, but there we are. It's going to be a bit wet and wetter tomorrow. Now, His Majesty the King is coming down to Knives today. That's a nice bit of um, news for some people. And um, oh yeah, I've got I got an apology to make to Virginia and Gene Pope and Mike Alka. And I was there thinking it's their birthday Tuesday, but in fact it was yesterday. So. All three of you, happy birthday to yesterday. So you have two birthdays this year, as far as I'm concerned. And I want to say thank you to Edward and a dear friend of mine. Come down. We had a lovely cup of, bit of chat yesterday morning. Nice cup of tea. Handsome, handsome. Got with a recollect on a few things, but the trains and, well, all, you know, the area around and all. But we had a fantastic uh, cup of tea and coffee over Burtis. Now, look, I'm going to do one today called Shy an Hour. At Cheyenne Hour in St. Levin Parish lived a man called Yohan and his wife Kakenza. Yohan was a tinner, but the bell he worked at nearby went scat and closed down. So sadly, he said goodbye to his dear wife for a long time and set out to find work elsewhere. He went east and walked for several days. He was taken in by a wise old farmer near Callington who agreed to keep him for a year, employed on all kinds of jobs on the farm and to pay him three gold pieces as wedges at the end of the year. When the year was up, the farmer said, well, here you are, your three pieces of gold, Yohan. But if you let me have them back again, I will give you a piece, a piece of valuable advice that will serve you well in future. Yohan thought hard, but knowing that work was still scarce in his own district, he decided to accept the offer. Here is the money, master, he said. Now, what is your advice? Hearken well, said the farmer. Never leave an old road for a new one. Yohan then agreed to work a second year on the farm for another three gold pieces. And at the year's end, the farmer offered him his money, but again suggested that Yohan hand it back to him for another piece of advice. Yohan agreed. This time, the old farmer's advice was never lodge in a house where an old man lives with a young wife. They agreed for a further year, after which the farmer offered Yohan the three gold pieces, but said, if you give me back the money, I will give you my best advice yet. Very well, Master, said Yohan. I only hope it stands me in good stead. At least I have learned how to farm. The farmer took the money and said, Think twice before striking once. Now, Yohan would not serve the farmer any longer, wishing to go home to his wife. Before you leave, said the Master, my wife has something for you to bake, a bit for you to take home with you. And the farmer's wife gave Yohan a cake she had just baked, saying to him, Promise me not to eat any of it until you get home to your wife. Yohan promised, and this and said farewell. On the way up, he met three merchants from Turan in his own parish who were travelling back from Exeter. They were glad of his company, but coming into a new road which the merchant said was a shortcut, Yohan left them, remembering the farmer's advice for which he had paid so much. So he followed the old road through Shaiwoon, but he could hear the merchants not far off being set upon by highwaymen. Yohan shouted, thieves, robbers, help, help, so loudly that the thieves ran off and the merchants were unarmed. Then at Marazion and the grateful merchants wanted Yohan to stay with him at the inn. But Yohan first insisted on seeing the host and hostess of the place. He found that the host was an old man grown feeble and his wife was young and homely. Thank you, said Yohan, but I will go next door and lodge there. <clears throat> that night when he was going to bed, Yohan heard a muttering from the room of the inn next door and saw a light shining through a hole in the wall between. A monk was there plotting with the innkeeper's wife to murder the old man and lay the blame on the merchants, and Yohan heard of what they'd said. Then the monk put his back to the hole in the wall, so that nobody could see the woman killing the old man as he lay sleeping in his bed. But Yohan took his dagger and cut through the hole in the wall, cut a piece of cloth out of the monk's habit. <clears throat> the next morning the hostess of the inn accused the merchants of murdering her husband, and the three of them were taken before a judge and were condemned to hang. But Yohan told the judge his story, and to prove it, he showed him the piece of cloth, which fitted exactly the hole in the monk's habit. So the judge released the merchants and ordered that the woman and monk should be hung instead. Yohan at length arrived home at Shonor. It was nightfall, and he wondered whether his dear Kakenza had been true to him for the past three years. So he listened at the door without knocking, and from the bedroom above, he heard her talking to someone in loving terms. Of course I did love you, my beauty. More than anybody in the world, he heard her say. Quite convinced that she had a lover, Yohan was about to rush in and kill them both with his dagger. But he remembered the wise old man's advice. Think twice before striking once. So he knocked the door. When Kakenza opened it, 
She was overjoyed at his return, and Johan found to his relief and delight that the man she had been talking to was her own little son who had been born soon after his departure. What money have you brought back then, Johan? asked his wife then. And she was bitterly, bitterly disappointed to find that he had no money, only a stale keg from the farmer's wife. I don't want your mouldy old keg, she cried in anger, throwing it down. At this, the cake broke open, and from it rolled nine gold pieces, which Joan had earned. For the good farmer and his wife had put them in the cake as a reward for his loyal service. Joan never had to leave home again. The three merchants who lived, whose lives he had, he had twice saved gave him ten gold pieces, and with the other nine, this gave him enough money to set himself upon a small, small farm, where he and his family lived happily ever after. Now look, that was a nice one. Have a good day.